Well, it's a big garden day today. Um, I've been piddling at it the last couple weekends, coming out here just doing some cleaning. But today's the big day. Get the barn clean out, get it moved in here. Got a lot of mulch still from the fall, putting on the beds. Onions show up next weekend, so it's almost first planting days. Onions and peas first. So I got onion rows started. Was just talking about tot to tot about raising these front beds because they always get flooded out in the spring. <laughs> they do. Yeah. So we'll share with you along the way, kind of probably not the entirety, but little things that we're doing. So I'll catch you up on just a couple things that I've already done. Um, pulled in some mulch because I did a terrible job last year finishing mulching all my beds before fall. First year I've ever missed on that. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, well, one, two, three, three beds left to mulch. And um, the front three beds is where we're gonna dump a lot of the barn clean out as we raise those up and then I'll top dress it with new compost. And then behind me here, Maybe you can see the gray dusting. Let's see this. I went through and put a lot of wood ash on the tomato rows. Not a lot, just a sprinkle of wood ash down the tomato rows. That bed had already been well mulched. And then I am gonna plant my onions just a little bit differently this year. So I'll take you over there and show, share that with you. So sorry about the wind. Um, so I drug rows. Um, with just a little hoe and didn't really turn the soil, just drug my hoe through it to make rows. And my plan is, is to plant the onions when they come on top of the hill. I'm going to use barn clean out and um, hold the trenches in. It will act, I'm hoping as a wick for moisture. So I have to water less um, and I'll lightly mulch over the hills. So this front half of this bed will be onions. The back half of the bed will be carrots. But the soil is super loose, nice. Um, garlic's down there at the end of that bed. It's all popping up really well. And now I'm just debating if I wanna put my green bean trellis somewhere else. I like to get all my trellises up before the gardening season, just so I'm ready to plant when the time comes. So we'll see. It's gonna be a big, big hard work day. And I'll make sure to share updates as we go. So Todd, <clears throat> uh, you know, those big lawn rakes that you pull behind your mower and dumped all this here for me last fall. And I never got out here and put it on my bed. So I'm scooping it up now, put it to use. Don't be a Rachel out in the garden. Either. You should do this every fall. But it sure has broken down really good. It's going to be some, got some good leaf mold in it. I think it'll make for great mulch and it'll feed my garden. Some of the garden spaces I won't even be planting till late April, early May. So it'll have a good three months to two or three months to break down and feed the soil. Now this one you probably noticed that there was still mustard and kale growing in there. Putting this on there, those earthworms are gonna come up and eat all that down. It's just gonna be living compost right now. Another thing I'm gonna get this year for the first time is I'm actually gonna order some beneficial nematodes. You just have to wait till, I think it warms up to like 50 degrees. So probably late April, I'm gonna put down beneficial nematodes all over my garden. I had, uh, the carrot, I think it's called a carrot fly that ate some of my carrots last year and I need to get rid of that. Um, it'll also help with 
squash, uh, squash borer larvae, um, just a lot of things I'm hoping that it helps with. And you can order that online. I think it's like Arbo, Arbo Organics. If I find the link and remember, I'll put it in the description. I don't remember the last time we moved this, which was last year, I think. The roof panel was much lighter, so it was pretty easy to take off. Now we have metal instead of plastic. So I don't know how that's gonna go. The other thing we did is I was able to use the front of my tractor. And once we got the roof off, we lifted the entire pen, moved it a ways, and set it back down. We didn't have to disassemble the whole thing, which is what we're hoping we can do again today because otherwise we have to take all the tarps off, all the straps off. So I'm hoping we can do the same type of thing where once we get the roof off, we can hook some chains up to it. We'll get it loose. We'll lift the whole thing. We'll move it to its new home and then we'll put the roof back on and we'll be done. Well, minus all the waste that's on the inside that we're going to now harvest, which is hay, straw, goat poop and goat pee from last fall all the way until now, spring. So all that sits and rots, decomposes to a certain extent, and we harvest all that and we move it over to the garden and Rachel puts it on all of her little special spots where she wants it. And I almost forgot, I have one extra strap to put here on the inside. Man, all this pine. You know what it smells like and it reminds me of was when you go to the county fair, like the county where we live every year, they have a big, huge fair every year. And you walk through all the animal barns to see, oh, look, let's check out the cows, let's check out the sheep, the pigs. It smells exactly like that in here today. The warm temps and all the pine straw. Hey, I'm ready. Ready? Okay. Is it gonna burn in that hook? No. Lesson we learned last year when we did this is all of the bedding wedges itself down around here. And when we tried to lift it with the tractor, all that was just holding it. So we need to get this thing loose first before we try to lift it. That corner's good. I'm quite sure when we did this last year, I filmed it. Hey, we have a video about it. I'm tempted to go in the house and watch it to try to figure out how I did this, but we'll uh, we'll just wing it for starters. One thing that always gets messed up when we do this is the corners of this pen can move like this. Yeah. And they, hey, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to our friend. Oh. <laughs> so we'll have to just readjust things a little bit to make it, get it lined up exactly how it's supposed to be for the roof panels to fit properly. But it doesn't look like it got too messed up this time. Oh, I want to show you guys 
the bottom layer looks like. Gosh. Lots of good fungi already growing. Um, I saw it somewhere, like some earthworms. So you can see the that white fungi in there developing really good, breaks down. So the bottom layer's really, really broken down already. I saw earthworms, oh yep, earthworms already. All this is gonna go right into the garden beds and it breaks down really, really well. But goat manure you can put right onto your garden. It's considered a cold manure, not a hot manure. So this mixed with all the pine straw or the um, pine shavings uh, will provide a really great nitrogen to carbon balance. Isn't that beautiful? Let's wait till it's lifted up to it's over there. Flying <laughs> up there. Okay. All right. Stop for a sec. A lot of poop. He asked me if this was like getting me flowers. I said, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so in case you're new here and you've never seen us do this process before, or you're like, no, don't do it. So this is our, we've done it ever since we've owned goats. We clean out the barn clean out every single year, put it directly on the garden, usually a couple months before planting time. And uh, sometimes I add top dressing of like a two inch layer of, you know, plantable compost on top of that. And then by the end of the season, it, the soil has consumed it, you know, all the goodness, the microorganisms and the earthworms have done their job and it turns into excellent compost. It's definitely a method in my mind of like core gardening or wick gardening where you're creating a barrier in there in your garden to hold on to moisture. Um, and we have great success. So last year, well, the last few years, two years, we've used our barn clean out for our in-ground beds and that was all native soil. So it needed a lot of work to build that up. This year, this is going into our raised beds. So um, see you guys in the garden. So I think you guys can see how much higher our higher the back is from the front. So my plan is to lift this up some and get a brick under there to help if I can do that. Every year these beds flood well up to here and I'm trying to get them leveled out so that they stop doing that. Better than it was for sure. Just stopped and had a little lunch break. So one of the things that I brought out was, I talk to you guys about this all the time. I save all my cardboard and 
keep it in the barn and I'll be putting cardboard down right here. Just since I've exposed this soil, um, it's just gonna be a natural habitat now for weeds to grow. Probably disturbed some roots of something that was well protected from all the layers of wood chips. Well, there's still a lot of beets I didn't harvest from last fall in here. We'll just uh, leave those and compost over it. I'm gonna pull this awful chickweed that comes from my chicken compost because we always feed the chickweed to the chickens and it doesn't break down well enough. Spinach is kind of struggling. I'm gonna go ahead and just compost right over it in place. I have a patch of chickweed down there I need to pull and we'll get this bed leveled and ready to go for the, get it ready to go. This bed is going to be brassica bed, this one and that one back there for this season. Now this uh, right here will sit like this until I'm ready to plant. Before I plant, I'll put on a good, uh, I don't know how much. I'll probably put on, I guess three bags of compost, um, which I'm gonna have to go buy because I don't have any uh, harvested right now to use. Okay. I got, no, not that way, not, oh, not that way. No, no, why not this way? Because I want to pull instead of push. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll push this through the wood chips. Pull, pull. <laughs> right here. Right here. Oh! What are you trying to do? Level it or move it that way? Move it just a little bit this way and level it. Okay. I'll be lifting okay. you put the wood chips under. Okay, see how Now, honestly, if I if I was planting, like say, something like a start of zucchini or cucumbers or even sweet potatoes, I would plant directly in this. I wouldn't worry about whether or not I had a top dressing of compost. There's enough finished compost in here to feed them. Um, but things like starting from seed, I that's why I prefer um, having a layer of compost on it. It just makes it easier for seed starting. Well, I know everything looks a little disarray in the garden right now. 
but this is a process that usually takes me a couple weeks to just get it set. Like I said, my onions ship out in, I think it's just a couple days shipping. I think they ship on March 22nd. So not next weekend, but the next weekend I should be planting onions right here behind me. But I've done enough today. My neck's about to fall off. I got these three beds topped off with the barn clean out, um, the back beds, and um, this side bed behind me all mulched. Wood ashes down, bar, uh, the fl flower pots are relocated, onion beds prepped. So what's next? I just I'm feeling a little bit sad for the rest of the beds that don't have fresh barn clean out. So I'm probably, I've got a ton left. I'm probably going to go ahead and just sprinkle some on all the rest of the beds. Even back in my Ruth Stout bed, um, just to give it some more nourishment beyond the, just the straw. And trellis is up. That's the last thing. So... What do you guys do to prep your garden for the year? Everyone's got their own method, their own madness. And honestly, mine changes a little bit season to season and year to year based on what I have available to me. So uh, if you're not prepping your garden yet, now is the time. Don't wait till you have those plants ready to go in the garden. You wanna prep those beds a good, depending on what you're using, typically at least two weeks before you plant. You're, you know, get that nourishment nice and rich and the soil absorbing it and ready to go. So thanks guys for coming along. Onions, peas are coming up. Our first plantings right behind it is carrots and brassicas and spinach. So I can't wait. Talk to you guys later.